It's another episode of our motorcycle build here, and it's a late evening. And we decided to spend maybe an hour, an hour and a half on this to get this off. And uh, we had uh, less than some trouble getting it off. Uh, maybe just a little ridge there on the bottom. Obviously, now it's upside down. There's no ridge. There's no ridge? No, I think it was just a matter of uh, it coming off even and letting the oil sit in the cylinders. It, it eventually got by the the rings and the oil ring and uh, it lubricated some more and it made the job easier. Yeah, and we can see there's marks. I mean, we put some WD and some oil on this, but we can see the marks where we think um, the studs weren't properly sealed from the top end. So that there are a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of goop and it's the same on the on the on the crankcase. How that happened block. is the head bolt was probably not tight enough, mm -hmm. so there was no seal. So the water from it sitting outside for years crept down three of the three or four of the head the uh, the studs that go in the head. Yeah, and uh, that's what made it hard to get off more than anything. I think the resistance was more in there than in the piston. Yeah, and if you look at on this side, like this one, I don't know if the, the light is good enough, but on this one, there's like a texture on the rod here that was created by the crud going into it. And it kept us from pulling the, especially the the, the, the brake lever side of the, the jugs up on this side here. We have this rag there. I don't know why it's there, but it's just uh, covering my light here. There we go. So on this side, it was pretty bad. Like in this area here, I don't know if you guys can see all the crust and the disgustingness. Um, now we have all these jugs pouring oil into the crankcase and some on the floor. That that's, why the rag. <laughs> that's why the rag was there, to keep it from hitting the floor. Anyways, so um, what do you think about the top of the, of the cylinder heads and the rings and whatever else? Well, they look in pretty good shape. They just had some carbon on them. This one especially. Yeah, you know, it, it ran rich, and there's always a cylinder in an engine that ran, runs a little bit richer than the other. So when it runs rich, that's, that's uh, uh, a mixture of gas, oil, and air, and that one had more of it, so it's a little bit blacker than the other ones, and that's fine. Four carburetors will do that, especially if they're not synced properly or if they're not adjusted the same. What's that? Four Japanese carburetors? Four Japanese mid-70s carburetors. Oh, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll do that, yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, we, we got the, we got the, it, it apart and, uh, that's good. That's a start. Slowly but surely. There is literally no, uh, edge on there. So even if I do a home bore with the drill, it would be ever so light just to, to get like a, a hatch pattern in there. A thin layer of whatever is coloring the side yeah. off, but then that's uh, it. And you see that there's a color difference that's a little bit of the um, where the piston bottoms out, where it doesn't go past that point there. Well, that's right. The the piston never comes down there. Yeah. So the, the, the reason why those liners are so long is to create extra strength, you know, so that, that the piston is contained when it goes bottom Sent, uh, the, the, to the, the bottom. The skirt doesn't oh, go past the right. edge of the bottom of the pit exactly. of the, of the so board. It, yeah. you know, it's it's good for strength. It doesn't hurt this part here. Yeah, yeah. So why you see this contraption now of the oil and stuff in there is <laughs> obviously from sitting for so many years, we got a lot of oil there, and by finagling the he the uh, the case off of off of the rest of the uh, the crankcase and that. Obviously, a lot of rust, crud, dirt, whatever else was there has now gone into the crankcase. For almost 20 years. Yeah, so yeah. I, have a, I had a few things of different types of oil and WD, and we're just putting it inside the crankcase, and it'll, it'll loosen things up slowly. Then we'll drain it, then we'll fill it up again with some better oil, and you know what? The way it's looking here, I think we'll be able to, uh, we'll do some measurements, we'll clean up, some stuff, but I, I'm suggesting to Charles that we don't even take it apart any further than this. We, we know what it freed up now. Yeah. And that was the initial concern. What was wrong with it that we couldn't get it to turn over? And now we know that it's a relatively minor issue that we don't have to take the trans apart, take the crankcase, you know, cover off and all the, that sort of thing that we have to do a bottom end rebuild, which is a, a, a pain in the ass and a bigger expense really. So it would be good if we could assemble, even if it's not looking great for now, get it to run yeah 
and then take it apart again, and then we could be fancy and pretty in there. and paint everything pink. So the uh, the plan is to maybe get this. Uh, I'm going to buy a rebuild kit online just so that we have. Especially, we need the new O rings, new seals, and whatever else there. What we need, and uh, it'll come with new um, new rings. It'll come with all new gaskets that we need to re put this engine back together. And um, then we'll get it to run. And then we'll uh, yeah, up and down the street, Vic, just to get the oil filter full of the shit that's on the bottom of the crankcase. And then uh, rinse and repeat, and rinse and repeat. So thanks for watching. Do subscribe. It's on the, the little button there below so that you can see the rest of my videos. This is on a playlist and this should be episode number 9 or 10 or something. So check it out. Uh, follow me on, uh, on this channel so that you can get updated on the uh, next videos. Um, leave comments, leave questions. If you have suggestions, we're obviously open to any and all of those. And uh, we will catch you soon. Peace.